Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to our crazy farming simulator series. We fold them up. And then we go herring out of here and we go off down to the next field. So there's a couple more fields that we want to do. Which is going to end up with us having a nice lot of hay that we could feed our animals. Which apparently, even if we put hay in for them, they're still going to starve to death on it. Which is the most bizarre thing. Like, seriously, this, they're literally starving to death on a, a feeder full of hay. I mean, yes, it's it's not got very much in there at the moment, but still, why is that making them starve? It shouldn't be. There's no reason for this. Frithgar is not amused. Let me fire that one up. Now, if I lower it down, is that going to stop the back mower? It did last time. No, it didn't this time quite sure what happened last time but anyway so this fence line up along here once we've done this grass here we will remove that fence line now what i'm thinking for future grass cutting sessions is this field right here will not be a grass field we're going to make this into an arable field so it's going to end up being a little bit bigger than it is right now got the edge of the pond right there I rather like and then we've got a rusty old gate right here that I'm never actually going to go through this gate so let's close that one hmm. okay I like the fact that the rusty old gate did actually clonk a little bit and it seemed to be slower moving like you would be picking up the end of a rusty old gate like that in order to drag it round because it's not hanging on its hinges properly it's quite a common thing I actually quite like that it's a nice little touch so this this map is really good and so far I'm quite impressed with what I've seen on this map I just don't like some of the little details like the cows being apparently starving to death when they've got hay like, what's the point in allowing us to put hay and grass in there if all that's going to happen is the animals are going to starve and not do anything with it? Like, it? It just seems an utterly backwards thing to go and do. Unless the idea is... Oh. If the health is on zero, the animals still continue to grow. They still continue to get bigger. So you can use grass and hay in your animal pen to have beef animals. You could raise them as beef animals. And even though it's got health on zero and all the rest of it, you can still raise beef animals. If you want them to reproduce, if you want some of your beef animals to be reproducing, you've got to give them better food. That does actually make sense. So you would have like uh, two or three different cattle pens. You'd have one that would be producing calves and then you take the calves out of that pen on a regular basis and move them into others. The other pens only have grass going into them. So they're not going to be reproducing because they'll be on zero health, but they will still be growing. They, they will still grow, they will still uh, fatten up they will still end up being animals that you can sell at market you just won't be putting in the better rations in order to be able to get them to reproduce that does actually make sense okay i'm 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 slightly more on board with this whole idea now it now that i understand it i'm i i see no reason why my theory is wrong actually like I, i'm saying i understand it like i, I i've definitely solved it I cannot think of any logical reason why that wouldn't be the explanation. That does actually seem to make a lot of sense to me. I don't know if that's the base game either. It might be that that's how the base game works. Like, that that's how it's supposed to work. Because we do have that as an option in the base game. You, you, you can do beef animals only if you want to. There was a little tiny bit of grass over there that I want to go and get. And... Right, that's another field done. Oh, I'm going to lift these two up. Can I get into that? So i got one field over there behind the cows. And then I've got one field here on this corner. Now I can definitely drive out of this bit. 
But I can't go into that bit. So I'm going to get rid of this one here. We're going to... Yeah, I'm, I'm almost definitely going to be getting rid of every gateway that we've got. Problem with the gateways is trying to target them. I have to do it like this. There. Add it then. Oh, there. Right. Targeting these gateways is not easy. But there we go. We can sell that one and we get rid of it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the chainsaw and just flip it over to the side like that. And then... And because I've got an option... I will show you this. There is an option here. Uh... Is it on this one? Wood cutting marker, aim marker, set field fruit, debug. Where is it? Oh, no, it's not in there. You go into here, and then you've got a screen. I think it's a general settings, additional settings right here. Auto start, animals. Trailer HUD, display a fill indicator above the trailer while filling. That's how long it stays there afterwards. So we can increase that a little bit if we want to. That's a really good one. Um, general settings. They've also increased things on this one. I, I, I got a couple of mods that add in. Yeah, the lumberjack. Right, walking speed 100%. Running speed 100%. Super strength is on infinite. Normal strength value is on 200 kilos. You can adjust that if you want. You just need normal strength. Super strength distance. How far we can pick things up if we want to. Normal strength distance. Doesn't really matter. Cut anywhere is on. Chainsaw cut distance. I can increase that if I want to. Chainsaw cut duration. Right. So it's down to one second. Whereas normally like four seconds. I think something like that. Um, which means that I can do that and I can cut through these hedges in no time at all. Now I'm, I don't know if there's like an extra bit of the hedge left in underneath. There probably is. We will find out later on when we start doing some more stuff with it. But that's what I like about that. The lumberjack bit where you use the chainsaw on the tree to cut the whole tree down, it unfortunately doesn't speed that bit up. This tree here is definitely so this bit doesn't actually speed that up. you still got to wait for the full four or five seconds, whatever it is. And I don't particularly like that you've got to do that, but you know, that, that's how it is. So we can now go in here. Except that maybe can't quite fit in there. We'll, we'll move on up a little bit. There we go. And now we can start doing our mowing. And we've got this lovely field here right alongside the river. I really like that we've got these um, fields beside the river. That That's absolutely brilliant. That field just ahead of us, we don't own that one. That one is not one of ours. And the only way you get to that one is via the road or if we were to take this hedge down. So this bit here, this old ruined mill, I think that's amazing. I love that. It's a fantastic little detail that has gone in there. And I'm willing to bet somewhere around here. Is there any around here? I thought there'd be one there. Oh, no, uh, I, I did. I thought there'd be one there. I'm betting. Oh, oh, there's a dude. He's doing some fishing. Look. He's, and 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 actually, the the, the 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 even the fishing rod that the fishing rod has got actual collision on it. That's amazing. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Can't get out the river. Dude, a little help, please. I'm actually fit. Oh, there we go. Right. He's actually, he's, he's fishing right beside the river. This is so cool. I love this as well. Right. In there. I, I want to have a look in here because I'm pretty certain that somewhere around here is going to be, there's one of the toys. I don't know if there's going to be two in here or if it's just going to be the one. Uh, press R on there. Right, okay, you found a cedar. There are nine more to collect. I don't know if there's going to be any more here. Are we? Is there anything else? I was pretty certain there was going to be another one in here somewhere. It seemed like prime property for hiding two. But maybe not. I suppose, yeah, if it's that obvious, then, then may maybe not. Like maybe they're not doing it because it's obvious. But look, next to the water wheel, 
There is a dude that is actually fishing. How cool is that? Well, I can't be here staring at Fisherman Fred all day. We have mowing to do. So I'm going to dash back down here and get into my tractor. And we're going to carry on with our work. Okay, so it's all well and good. Fisherman Fred sat there by the river enjoying his day off. But some of us don't get days off like that. Some of us have got to work. 24-7. Never, ever having... Well, okay, all right. There's no farmer that has no day off ever. Um... There are plenty of farmers who will try to convince you that they never have a day off, like, ever. And, yes, there's plenty of farmers that don't have a full day off. Because you've got animals, you've got to feed them. Right? That's just a thing. Like, it doesn't matter what happens throughout the year. If you've got animals, you've got to feed them. Or, you know, you've got to find someone who will do that bit for you. And maybe later in life you're able to find someone who can feed your animals for you for a few days while you go away or something like that but generally even if you have days off as a farmer you still got to feed your animals it's just one of those things um so some farmers will use that as a i never get a day off thing when actually it's complete and utter rubbish now you go and feed your animals and yeah sometimes it takes a couple of hours to feed your animals but that's the only thing you do. Right? It, you can, if you're working on a farm, if you live on a farm, if you own a farm, you can go out and you can work all hours. And you literally can go out and work all hours. There's always work to do on a farm. And for those of you who have lived the lifestyle, you know full well that we can go out and we can work every hour available under the sun. And then some besides. There's always work that needs doing on a farm. But you also know that we have days off. And our days off just involve planning around feeding the animals as well. So, like, if I'm going to have day off, I think, well, I want to go out for the day. I'll feed the animals early in the morning and then uh, we can go out. It doesn't matter if we come back late. And then tomorrow we feed them late. So it doesn't matter if we're, like, really hungover. We've got time to recover. And... Feeding cows is generally a little bit differently done to feeding um, other animals in that you don't have to go and feed them at exactly the same time every day. If you keep pigs, you have to feed them in the morning and you have to feed them in the evening. I know this, I've done this. I've kept pigs. Um, so those kinds of animals, you do actually need to feed them at the... At, you know twice a day morning and evening so it's not something you can sort of get away from quite too easily it's the same with like a dog or a cat or something like that um although a lot of dogs you only feed them once a day anyway so that bit's kind of different um cows though you make sure the side you know silage hay whatever it is you're feeding them it's available to them you almost always only feed cows once a day if you're milking cows it's different because depending on your milking system, you may be milking once or you may be milking twice, sometimes even three times. Although I haven't encountered a farmer that milks three times a day for a very long time. Something that used to be done more than is now. Um, once a day is actually a thing that is becoming more common than it used to be. And that actually surprised me when I first heard about it. But yeah, once a day milking. Um, it's still a job that's got to be done. So... If you're a dairy farmer, it's different. Like you, you, you are going to be more dedicated to having to spend a good chunk of every day looking after your animals. Um, but you still get your days off. Christmas Day, you're not working all day Christmas Day. Um, and there's other days like it as well. And I know I've worked on all kinds of different farms. I grew up, my younger years were on dairy farm. It you go and you do the milking for two hours in the morning you go and do the milking for two hours in the evening while you're doing the milking you're also making sure that they've got silage and their food is all available that's great cows have got their silage they are then set for the day so then all you've got to do is go and do the evening milking which is another two hours so yes you are doing four hours of work it's split apart a fair bit um, and then the rest of the day, you're not doing any work. And I know farmers who will take a good two to three weeks off over the Christmas period. And when I say take time off, 
They will do the milking for a couple of hours each day. And that is it. For two to three weeks. They have a nice long break. They will go and see all their family and friends. Um, it used to... I say it used to. I mean, it still does happen a lot. But I think it did happen more before the advent of the internet and so on. Um, you can have Zoom calls with people now. And you don't feel quite so separated from people as you used to. Um, you can communicate with people that you're not close to much more easily. So the significance of going to visit a person is... It, less than it was. It's still an important thing, but it's definitely less than it used to be. And sometimes I think that's a good thing, and sometimes I think it's a bad thing. Like, you, you're not as lonely as you used to be. <clears throat> People are definitely... But at the same time, you can feel more lonely because you have less direct human contact at times. But anyway, that's, that's a whole different debate. Um... But with the farmers, like, I've known farmers who would take, like I say, two, three weeks off over Christmas and they would go and visit everybody. They wake up, do the milking, and then they're out for the day. And then they come home and they do the evening milking. And I know other farmers who not only do they do that but if, if they're ones that aren't dairy farmers then you know you can plan nights out quite easily it, you, you can plan nights away because you wake up you feed your animals first thing in the morning you go away you come back the following afternoon so you've had a, a good night out you've had time away and you come back the following afternoon the first thing you do when you get back is you feed your animals and as long as everything's all right that's it that's all you need to do and feeding your animals when you've got beef animals is a lot less labor intensive than dairy like dairy farming is much more labor intensive it's got to be um and does have to be said even then how did i start on all of this oh yeah farmers telling you they never have a day off like yes okay not a full day off I will grant you that it's not a full day off, but it is still time off. And in my personal experience, a farmer's time off is not like, if you're doing a job like, you know, I used to do a factory job, I had this factory job, and if you're doing a job like that, and your time off, you have your, your days off, like you have a few days and then that's it, that's your time off and it's done. Okay, I have finished all of the mowing, Quite frankly, I'm wondering about... I'm, I'm questioning my own wisdom here as to whether or not I should be doing... Like, the idea is that I'm supposed to make enough money to be able to get into the the bigger items and the faster items, the ones that I've been changing up. So far, all I've done is spend a load of money that I borrowed and I've just got some big machinery that's slightly faster and it's starting to feel less like a crazy series and more like a slightly over-the-top series. It's not over-the-top. We're not wanting slightly over-the-top. We're wanting absolutely insanely ludicrous. So I'm kind of thinking that this set of mowers that I've got right here is a set of mowers that we're never ever going to use again. And I can't be bothered. Oh, actually, I can be bothered because I need to go up there anyway. So let's take these set of mowers that we're never going to use again. We'll take them back up there and we'll sell them. Job done. I can get up here without actually crashing into anything. Apparently not. Getting out around that corner is not easy. This is why we need to change things up and have a road that goes right across that hill means we've got to buy a lot of land to be able to do that, which means we're going to need to borrow a lot of money. Kind of thinking that TLX thing would be a good one, but it's not going to help us out. It's, we're not going to be borrowing. Like, it, it, it's... I think the mower would be a good one. And the... The mower and the forage wagon combination that we had previously, those would both be really good to start us off with. We're going to want a combine. The combine is stupid expensive. At least the, the combine we had last time. So we're going to need something different to that. 
And also the issue with any combine, if I get a small combine, um, like uh, I've kind of really overpriced it to take into account the fact that it's a tiny combine. Whereas a slightly bigger combine, which is for us going to be cheaper, is going to be very, very difficult to take anywhere on this map. And I like that. That is part of the challenge of us starting off on this map at least so do you and let's do the repaint and repair and sell yes what should I get for that? that's 13,000 for that one this one's 119,000 so we repaint re repaint and repair and sell for 131,000 I now have 160,000 I like it a little bit of cash Next up, I want to do some turning. Now, I did get this one to go faster, so we should be all right with that bit. Let's go on to you, right there. I'm probably not going to keep this one. Last time we used it, I was not overly impressed with it, but I'm giving it one more shot because it could have been the map rather than the issues we were facing. I need to drive on the correct side of the road. There we go. Telehandler going up the road there. I do like that we've got farm traffic driving around on this map. I think that's a really nice touch. It's actually really good. And this is one gateway that I've actually left intact for now. Oh. The gates don't appear to have collision. I'm still getting rid of it. I'm getting rid of all of them. I just don't like these gates. Uh, let's do this trying to find the gate as well see I can uh, there we go H cell metal gate right that got me 200 so I'm thinking that that particular way of it is a bit different I'm not quite sure why it does it that way instead of actually giving me the, the correct price it's very slow unfolding this, isn't it? It feels like it could have some improvements done. So let's go there and lower that down. And then, right, we've got the speed. But it's going close to the edge of the field. I'm going to have, like, bits left behind and... It's, it's not going to do it tidy, and if I was going a little bit slower, I'd probably be able to reach the edge of the field properly and, and get it exactly lined up. Honestly, I don't think it matters very much, because I suspect next time we do this, we'll have something slightly more powerful. So I want to be able to... I think that the best way for us to be able to make money is going to be with the cows with milk. Right, cows and milk is going to be the best way for us to start off with. It does actually look like we're turning all of the grass here this time. Now, I have got a Stevie modified machine and I've increased the speed again. So that is definitely a bit better. But it doesn't look like it's leaving loads behind like it did previously, he says. Going, finding some patches that have been left behind. And if I try and get those bits, I'm just probably just a really bad... Well, I am. Like, There's no denying that I'm driving terribly here. And that's probably not helping anything. Let's go through here. Uh, cows are going to be making us some money. We don't have much in the way of grain. And buying a chicken pen is going to cost us... That's going to set us back a million euros. One chicken pen for 5,000 chickens is a million, right? I've deliberately set that to be expensive. I don't want it to be easy and cheap. And I can see little spots of grass being left behind here on this. I don't like this at all. So this hay turner is, is not really doing what we want. However, this is probably the only time we're going to make hay in this entire series like this. Um, the rest of the time that we make hay, it will be done the way that we were doing it in the last one, which is we just cut the grass and we take it and we put it into the building. 
And I've got that building already. It's, it's ready to go. And... Right. It took ages to do that, didn't it? The, the, the whole folding that thing up. So I can't be bothered with that. Which means that we're going to need to remove a bit of hedgerow here. Oops, there we go. Right, uh, that way. There's one bit. There's another bit. Uh, another bit over here. There we go. Right. Doing this hedge is, is nice. I, I like, I love the hedge. I, I really do. I, I love this hedge. So long as the hired help is able to recognize this hedge properly. Is there another bit? There we go. There's the last bit. And then we can use the object hider here as well. And we can get rid of this fence. So that says hide player trigger. I don't want to hide the player trigger. Right. That's not what I want. So I need left shift. I don't know why it's showing hide. Play What's hide player trigger? What's that supposed to mean? What even is the player trigger? Left shift H. Player trigger. Restore. Restored me to the whole map. Yeah, I'm just confused by that bit. So the, I, I need to be able to find the bit where I'm hiding the rest of this. Ah, uh, there we go. Hide. Oh, I see. Because it's in big chunks. I've actually, I, I was like right up near the end. I think what I need to do is I need to go. F there we go. Right. It, it shows up much easier there. And it's. It's just in big chunks. That's where I was getting it wrong. That didn't look quite right just now. It was kind of like flashing along up in the air over there. That that was <laughs> slightly bizarre. Um, go over to here. Yeah, all right. Okay, so that was my fault on the fence. I was just not moving along far enough on it to make it work properly. We will chop down this tree right here. That's everything that we want to do on that bit there, I think. No, let's get rid of this tree here as well. That one's going to go. Right. Tree's out of the way. We've now got a little bit more open ground, and we'll just work through this like it's one piece. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.